I've got a few minutes before I need to be at the creme. Um, so I'm just having a few minutes with my, my old man. Um, things move so quickly. Um, days go by in a flash and a lot of the time I don't really have time to um, think much about what's happened. Um, so usually it's at the, like, just now, like when I'm just about to take somebody to the creme, um, that I have a few minutes to just think over their life and what it was and this old man um, it's not the same without him like tripping over him <laughs> um, I keep making his lunch and his dinner it's just there's always been nine and I keep making his dinner I used to even though he was blind and pretty much deaf um, he always knew to go in, he, he, he can smell dinner getting made and he would go into his, um, he used to get fed in the cupboard because Mary Doll used to always try and steal his dinner, she would sit, she knew she wasn't allowed to steal it so she would sit like right here <laughs> and watch him eating his dinner and like, you know, like kids like uh, not touching kind of do anything um, so he always had his dinner by himself so he knew and he would go and sit in his cupboard or stand in his cupboard and just wait just totally silent, just stand there and it could be like 10-15 minutes before it was ready but he would just stand and just knew it was going to be like popped in front of him and you know I am sad and I miss him but gammy hearts can he last forever and I don't know whether I'm just getting better at death and dealing with it or whether I don't think I'm getting, maybe I am getting hard into it, I don't know, maybe I just cope better, maybe it is just repetition, it's just been like a run towards death so much and death is around so often that it just becomes like the fear of it's gone, like that, feeling like you're falling off a cliff, like the world's ended, like, you know, that's gone because I know that everything will go on and I'll miss them and that's okay, it's okay to miss folk, um, it's okay for it to hurt, like I'm not scared, I think that's probably it more than anything is like I'm not scared of the pain anymore and also because, I think because there's the purpose of the hospice, like that helps so much as well and this old man, Mr Mr Burns, Mr 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 Burns, um, he is kind of like a poster boy for why I do all this um, he was a miserable old man, he'd had a horrible life, like 17 years of just never being seen, never being noticed, never being appreciated for who he was, which is a grumpy old get, I mean he really was a really grumpy old man, <laughs> like even even after a year and a half, like I still took my, my bloody hand, like life in his jaws whenever I tried to put his jumper on, he would be like, rrr, rrr, rrr. <laughs> he's with gammy fangs. He never actually bit me, but you know, when he first arrived, like he'd spent his whole life alone and he was left in a back garden to just slowly go blind and deaf um, and just walked about in a circle all, the t like, all day, just put out in a garden, left alone. And when he went to come in, the people brought him to me. And when he, when they showed me, like I asked him, I asked like, what's his walk schedule and stuff? And they kind of looked at each other like, shit, like, I didn't know we were going to get questioned. Um, and they were like, oh, there was that time we took him uh, up the golf course. And I was like, he's 17. And you've taken him like one walk. Uh, honest to God, like, and then she showed me what they did when, when they wanted him to come in at night, which was, um, she just went up and like clapped really loudly in his face. This wee old man who's blind and almost deaf. So all day he was just like expecting. So he'd walk about like when he first arrived, he just walked about like expecting something in his face all the time. So over time, I mean I'd never helped an old man who was blind. I've helped other dogs who were blind, but not an old man who had been like he was basically like it was like PTSD or whatever you want to call it, of just like constantly expecting something in his face. So over time, like we built up a friendship and he'd never had a friend before. And that's the whole point of the hospice, like that's, and I think having that purpose of knowing when someone arrives that I want to become their friend as quickly as you can and have that friendship and that relationship and, and help them and 
you know, like he, you know, because he was a real blind man, he had his halo, so he had like a wee harness that he put on, and it's like a, a thing that Velcro's on, and it gives him that like radar. Um, because there's a lot of obstacles, as like crazy spaniels and wee fat mentally what grannies prancing about, and cockerels and chickens and dogs and everywhere. And that gave him that security. So over time, like I realised, like, oh, he needs like this wee extra bit of security. So he's got that early warning system that if anyone's coming towards him, he would know. So eventually, like over time, all that melted away and he could walk about quite the thing and he would just potter about in his own wee world. And again, over time, like I, I realised that it would help him. He's got his wee jacket on. He's going to be, he's going to go in his wee, I love this wee tartan jacket he's got. This is his favourite jacket. And whenever I was putting that on, we had like a system um, where I would put his harness on, so if I'd tap him twice on the on the, the sides, and he would know that was to stop. And then he'd get his harness on, and then I'd put his jacket on, so I would tap his nose just so he knew something was coming over his face, and then I would tap his right leg, and then his left left leg, and then right leg, so he knew what was coming, and that. That friendship, just having, and then it would, and then when I was finished, I would tap him twice, and that would be him off. He would know it was him. And if I was ever like, he, he did, he wasn't one for like a lot of fuss. He, he just wanted pretty much to be left alone and to have a. He would have his duvet. This was his duvet, and that always had to be washed every day because it was a mess every morning. And then every day that had to be the first washed and then at night um, he had a pile of duvet and that's what he preferred he didn't like flat blankets he liked a pile and he would just whatever pile he could find even if it was dirty washing or whatever it was he would just walk along and just plonk himself down and go to sleep pretty much instantly so he would just always find this <laughs> he would just like plonk himself down and um it's not that i'm not sad i am i'm gonna miss him a lot. I miss him, like I miss him, tripping over him, and because he was always just under my feet. I used to call him the old dodge him, because he he just walked until he hit something, and then turned round and <laughs> kept going the other way. And um, I really miss him, but I'm not sad in the sense that he's it's he's the entire reason. Even if he was the only person I'd ever helped in the hospice, that's what it's for. It's for we old souls that have never had a friend that needed someone they could rely on and have safety and know that they were secure and safe and loved and could just be whoever they wanted and he pretty much wanted to be by himself most of the time um, and that's fine that's what he wanted and that's what he got and I actually feel like I think the more I do this and the more friends are like friends who pass over um it's not easier but it's more i take more comfort in knowing that i've done what i said i would do so when when he arrived i said what i say to everybody um enjoy it while it while it lasts enjoy it enjoy every minute we'll make it as good as we can um let that inner puppy come out, and it did. You know, his inner puppy came out. You'd find him like just rolling on his back. Like, that was one of his favourite things. Was just like face first into a pile of washing, and then just rolling on his back, just absolutely loving it. And he's in wee world. Um, and when the time comes, as leave as gently as you can. And he left on his own. He left in his own way. And that I think that's exactly what he would have wanted. I'm really, really glad he didn't have to go through um, having to be probably sedated and then um, having to be helped, you know, injections and all that kind of stuff. He really, really wouldn't have liked that because he just didn't like being um, around people that much. <laughs> um, and that would have been really distressing for him. So I feel like a lot of comfort. I feel... I don't want to say proud but it kind of feels like that like I did my job like I did what I said I would do and it was perfect for him and that kind of changed now and it's a really really nice feeling to have been able to do that for somebody to turn like to change their life even if he had to wait 17 years his life changed and he had that peace and a friend and that's that's it that's what that's what I wanted that's 
what I wanted for him, it's what I want for them all and it's a really nice comforting feeling, not that it does me hurt now having to say goodbye to his body and look at the way that sun's moving, maybe you can see that, <laughs> see the sunbeams. <laughs> Um, so yeah and thanks so much everybody that helps me do all this because I know I'm not alone and um, I couldn't do this by myself you know people that help like Kerry's there today <laughs> look at that <laughs> Kerry's here to, there today looking after everybody and my dad's there and Paul's there and Becca and Taylor so people that help like hands on and help me um, and everybody that helps pay the bills and on the page and just lets us know that we're not alone. Um, it really means so much. Um, what else is there? You know, together we made this old man's life and all the folk in the back, these are all my, my bird folk. Um, oh, creme days are hard. They really are. Like, there's no getting away for the fact that it's hard taking your wings knowing that they're going to be. Is that like never again like that? spirit and that body will never be like that again but I know they're not far away because they always show me and I know they will again so um <sighs> but anyway I probably have to go I'm supposed to be there at two o'clock and it's two minutes past two so I better go um right 